Hello. Ooh. <laughs> are we recording? We are. Good. There's four of us here. Three and a half. I'm nearly asleep. <sighs> okay, two and, and I'm two dying and in a corner. Two and a, two and a bit then. Three. Yeah, two and a bit. <laughs> two, two and two thirds. Yeah. We got Paul Maybe. Slades. Yeah. Paul's what? Paul's got Slades. Slades? Yeah, sleep aids. Is that like sleep apnea? No, it's the opposite. But that's what I've got. So work catching. <laughs> you just you become sleep. <laughs> you mutate into yeah. sleep. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> what was that noise? I, I'd rather not share. <laughs> <laughs> right, music. <laughs> I suppose I should mention this is a review show as well. Right, music. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a review with the crew show with Mr. Adam Gatchel. Well, hello. Mr. Paul Brown. Yeah. Mr. Ross Murphy. All right. And me, Chris Quinton. Hello. I don't think we did that bit. At the we didn't in the, the other, show. in the other no. show. No. I'll just copy and paste this yeah. one into it. It'd be fine. Maybe. You know. Maybe I'll do that because it'll be quite funny yeah. if yeah. we mention this in both podcasts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll try and remember tomorrow morning <laughs> at 6am, but I can't <laughs> promise anything. Um, right. So, yes, reviewing stuff. Yeah. What have we all been watching? Anything interesting? I'll go. Go on then. Got two. Go on Can then. I'll do my two. Yep. I watched Star Wars Last Jedi on Sunday. Ooh. Is it the first time you've watched it? No, it's the third time I've seen okay. it and it's did really you, fucking good. Did you buy it on Blu-ray? Yeah. yeah it's fucking bang. It's It's really good. I don't understand why people hate it so much. I know. I just I watched it with Anna as well, and she didn't come to cinema and watch it with me. And she's like, "That was good." <coughs> I might so watch it with it the is missus. Good. I might actually watch it tonight with the missus. Then, it's, uh, yeah, I've really enjoyed it, and and a few people I know have just like when I've tried to have a conversation about it, they've got I'm not talking about it. It's rubbish. It's like it's not rubbish. What are you talking about? It's just quite interesting, isn't it? It's as in different. It's it's kind of as far as Star Wars is concerned, it's very brave. To be honest, well, yeah, it, push, it pushes some boundaries of things that we know about in Star Wars, but there's never been any rules for, so they've gone a bit yeah, further with it. But well, there kind of are rules because you've started story threads in the previous movie, and he's just gone, fuck nah, it. fuck him. We don't have to do Chop that. Chop him in half. Who says we have to do that? Yeah, but why is, why is there you? a rule that you have oh, to follow that story on? Doesn't fucking matter. No. They're bollocks. Semantics. Yeah. Get over it. Yeah, and also like some of the force powers, people going, "Oh, that's ridiculous." Well, sorry, but it's not ridiculous. Like well, someone being able to push someone that stood in front of them by moving their hand is ridiculous. I hope. Like they fucked all that up as soon as they did the prequel bloody trilogy, anyway, didn't they? So I, yeah, but I hope what they've done, what what this has done is. What this has done for the Star Star Wars series has is knocked the it's knocked the nail on the head for movies like Solo and Rogue One, because they are just like oh let's go back to the That's uh, traditional Star Wars to the founding and just uh, milk it some more. Whereas actually Episode Eight is a much braver movie than both of those films are. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I'm hoping that in this post episode eight world, the next movie that gets announced, which will be an anthology movie, will be a bit braver than retreading old boards. Yeah, fair enough. And that I tell you what, even on my telly, I know I've got a nice telly and nice surround sound. That the bit where the hyperdrive into the ship is just un- spoiler alert. Yeah, well, I can't wait to watch it again. But yeah, if you're going to steal it off the internet, steal yourself a really good copy. Yeah. I'll have a look and see what's available. I'll well, get, it get, it on, I'll get it on Blu-ray <laughs> when it comes out. It's out now. Is it? Yeah, yeah. All oh, right, cool. That's why I take it you bought it, did yeah, you, Russ? Yeah, yeah, Star Wars, isn't it? Did you buy like a nice The only Star big... Wars movie I've never bought or seen is that the Clone Wars movie because I heard it's awful. I've not seen the Clone Wars movie. Well, the animated yeah. movie. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know. I've never seen Jabba it. Jabba the Hutt's son gets kidnapped. Oh, oh gosh. Yeah. How bad does that sound? Yeah, that sounds fucking horrendous. <laughs> sounds like Nickelodeon. That's what it yeah. sounds like. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, did you buy yourself a nice sort of collector's edition or no, something? No, just the just the nice. I I got the 4K one just as a preemptive because it comes with the Blu-ray and a digital download. Has it got it's a documentary on it like the yeah, American so version? Yeah, crack on with the extras cool. at some point. And like 40 minutes of like cut scenes and stuff as well. Apparently, I haven't got there yet because I haven't had any time to myself. Well, apparently, there's like a really in-depth hour and a half documentary on the American Blu-ray. I didn't know if that was what was on the British one. I didn't know if the British I don't, I don't know, because if it's You'll not, I'll just let me know. off the internet. But, um, yeah, my, oh, I hate this, because my life is just 
my life is just perpetual compromise now. So I've just started doing this thing, uh, even at the weekend, if I just wake up and it's like half past six, or if I wake, no, sorry, if I wake up and it's half seven because I've had a lie-in, I go, do you know what, I'm just going to go downstairs and watch a movie that I fucking want to watch. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that'll be the next time I stab through all the extras on Star Wars. Do you ever, do you actually sit down and watch all the extras on your DVDs and Blu-rays? Yeah, it's on or shit like it? that, I will. Like, I watched all of the Force Awakens stuff. Okay. Yeah, it's real. Like I, I I, I'll do that with films that are worth weirdly, it. Weirdly, I haven't bought Rogue One on Blu-ray, but uh, someday it'll be like 10 quid and I'll get it, and then I'll watch all the extras. Right. Six quid in C, yeah. Mate, I used to be so into DVDs that I would watch all... I'd listen to the commentaries, I'd watch the, all the extras. The thing that really used to do my head in with the extras on DVDs, though, would it'd just be a bunch of interviews with the cast sucking each other's dicks. Oh, yeah, no. I hate that. That's, no, that's why you get movies that have particularly good... Um, a documentary do- style, like yeah, yeah. extras are like yeah. they're way better than they were when. I, I, I There's remember. a difference between a film that comes with like a gag reel and some deleted scenes, and then a film that comes with the cast being interviewed, talking lovely lovelies about each other, and then something like Dick Star Peppers. Wars, where you get like an hour and a half. Oh, the benchmark is the Lord of the Rings extended editions. Say again. The benchmark is the Lord of Rings extended oh, edition. Yes. They've what? all got like a three hour documentary with them. And actually that documentary is not a three hour documentary, it's a nine hour documentary. I tell you what, the Blade Runner ones are very, very good as well. Yeah. From when they did the final cut. There's there's three really good solid documentaries. Yeah, I've on got there. the document one of the documentaries is, is good enough that it's got a name. <laughs> you know that's yeah, a benchmark yeah, yeah. a good documentary. Yeah, yeah. It's not just for extras. We actually <laughs> went to the effort of naming this documentary. This is true. But yeah, there's. I, I remember uh, DVDs. Yeah, just real quickly, one last thing about DVDs. Oh, the we always used to do this thing called good movie, bad DVD, and <laughs> the best, the best movie to bad DVD ratio of any film ever. Do you remember when DVDs first come out? Warner Brothers did this awful thing where they had these clip open cases, clip open with and cardboard, they were cardboard, and they were cardboard yeah. in the front. Yeah, <coughs> Matrix. And, came and then I listened to this. Yeah, Goodfellas. Yeah, one of the finest pieces of motion picture ever made yeah comes on a flip disc so the movie doesn't fit on one side so you, when he sees banging on the door going is that slut janice rossi in there just stops halfway through a scene brilliant and then you have flip the disc over yeah dvd extras on the back it says dvd extras trailer that's it i own <laughs> i own there that, you go i own that, that copy of Goodfellas with the flip there disc in the cardboard case. Best clip open. movie, yeah. worst DVD yeah. ever. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. They got that and the Matrix in a cardboard flip open case when I with my PS2 when I bought it. They were yeah, like yeah, bonus. Yeah. There was those two things and a couple <coughs> of games. When I bought my PlayStation Four, I got Batman, like Man of Steel, oh dear, and Pacific Rim on oh dear. both in the cellophane still. Oh dear. Still. Still. <laughs> this is a year later as well. Oh, mate, I've had my PS4. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> as in a year later since you uh, mentioned it on the podcast. Oh, did it? Did I mention it before? <laughs> you still well, a year, that's a year yeah. ago. We might have some new <laughs> listeners since then. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Right. Paul? Christ. Um, you know, I've just been buried in work this week, but I have seen, I've got really into it, um, BBC Three, believe it or not. Three. And it's called This Country. Okay. It's about, it's, it's a mockumentary yeah. following. Is it about this country? Yeah, a number of. Which is the UK, by the way. Yes, this country. Well, yeah. Britain. Well, it's, it's set in the Cotswolds. <laughs> so it's all this U-R-U-R-A, but it's following the youth of today right. living in the Cotswolds. Amazing. And um, they think they're all big hard gangster-like and they're, you know, running around burning each other's scarecrows and. It's it's brilliant. It's so well done. The okay. two main characters are so believable as well, and it's oh, it's just incredible. It, it, it's yeah, it's just really charming. BBC Three, did you say? Yeah, yeah, because they're an online channel it's online, now. Well, yeah. it's online, but it, you can get it on BBC iPlayer. Yeah, right. yeah. it's exclusively on there, so you can get it on there, and it's just fucking brilliant. Considering how shit BBC Three got. Yeah. Before they shut the channel down, they've now got that. They've got young offenders. Yeah. They've had quite a few <coughs> things come out recently that are fucking good. Yeah, okay. and it's like, why were you not producing this stuff when you were a channel? Yeah, like why? Why were you producing two pints of lager and a packet of wankers? Yeah, Jesus, right. that was painful. <laughs> but yeah, it's into its second season now, and it's yeah, it's great. It's really good. Um, 
<sighs> Do I admit it? Yeah, I admit it. I finally, <laughs> finally got around to watching Guardians of the Galaxy. Yay! Hey. What the did first you think? One. It's all right. Only all right? Yeah. I was. That's a shame. I, I was expecting it to bite me like um, Deadpool did, and it didn't. I thought it's all right. I suppose it's, it's not space quite movie. as yeah, it's not quite as adult, so it doesn't no. quite have the bite that that does. But yeah, it was. Ju- I think it was a bit overwhelming. There's just there's so much visually going on, and the pace it, and it's just like I, you, you you get to the point halfway through the film, and he's just shit blowing up everywhere, and they've got the the ships that form the bloody great big net, and it's all like, you know, it's you just become numb to it. There's You're right. so it, much yeah, there. Yeah. It is a bit attack of the clients in that respect. Yeah, yeah. You don't appreciate it half, but then, halfway through. Think about it this way. The director, James Gunn, who also kind of helped write it, and yeah. his brother, who plays um, Yondu's main guy, Yeah, those two used to make trauma movies together, and they now make Guardians of the Galaxy. Right. Like that's a pretty amazing step that's from like Troma movies. He did Tromeo and Juliet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's going to be a stupid question, but I've got to ask it. The uh, something the Destroyer guy who Drax Drax it is he CGI? Or no, is he no, really that big in real life? He's a really WWE, that big. WWE massive WWE wrestler. Have you seen Blade Runner twenty forty nine? No, not yet. He's in oh, that he's as in well, that. without yeah. makeup on. That's mental. Yeah, he's huge. WWE wrestler. I was just trying to figure it out. And, and I bought some media this week. I actually bought some. <gasps> yeah, I spent a fiver. On what? But it's, oh, it was on a, a bit of music, so it's not really relevant to this podcast. No, it go was, on. Um, what was it? Uh, Severed Heads. Nice. It's one of their albums. Oh, they've got all... I say their albums, it's just one guy now, and he saw, sod it, and he's put it all on Bandcamp. <laughs> <laughs> their entire Amazing. back history and everything he's, they're doing he's got five new albums coming out this year he said oh, I'll just put it on five. he had um, these, these two albums on there and he said they were, they were going on the second market for ridiculous like for hundreds of pounds and I thought nah I don't agree with this so you can get it here for a fiver <laughs> Um, <laughs> and it's remastered. <laughs> that's pretty much. Me- that's nuts. I was just thinking, like thirty years after the advent of the CD, pretty much, and uh, the, somebody's opening a record shop in Newport. Yeah, that was. I'm like so happy that. about that. Yeah, that's brilliant. We've got like five record shops on the island now, Have we? and there's I already just... two others in Newport. Where's the new oh. one in Newport? <coughs> uh, next to um, Heroes, isn't it? It's, I I think it's in so Bar- it's on a little side street, basically. Yeah. Right. I love a good record shop. <laughs> Just never go record shop it, shopping. The fact that they're having to open it on a side street tells you a little something, though, doesn't it? Yeah. We're going to invest, but we're not going to invest that much. No, but you'd be nuts to um, want to put your shop any more, more predominantly than that. Yeah, fair. Well, yeah, how it, much it, it costs. Yeah, business rates on, on a high street now, you, you might as well go a small street because you're more likely to actually be able to Especially run a business. Especially the high street where we live. It's yeah. ridiculous. But, yeah. Right, Anywho, who's next? Adam. <coughs> um... Oh, uh, without saying too much about it, I've caught up with, I've been catching up with my Judge Dread magazines, my cool. monthly magazine, just sort of reading the stories in that and getting closer to catching up on three years' worth. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <That's> doing. <laughs> just been so busy with other stuff. Um, watching wise, um, I watched a Netflix documentary, a six... I don't know if it's made by Netflix. I don't know if... I don't think it is. Um, but it's a six-part documentary based around um, uh, the people that joined a cult um, started by a, an Indian yoga instructor. I've heard about this. Um, in America in the 80s. And I remember seeing pictures of him in papers and on the news when I was a kid. I didn't realise how fucked up the whole thing this was. This documentary is supposed to be amazing. Yes, it's six episodes. Each episode is about an hour. Did you say what it was called? Um, I can't remember what it's called. Um, but it's, it's so absolutely crazy. Like, I think he started out with some good ideas. And then, like most cults, people around him took over and... Everything got crazy. They literally moved loads of people into this town and like took o- pretty much took over the countryside next to this town, and then what took over the the government of the town, and then tried to take over the state. 
Wow. Yeah, in the 80s. Okay. And there was, like, people from the president down started getting involved because it was, like, proper mental. So it went full Jonestown then. People... Thing, yeah. uh, it, that was nearby, and yeah. that's why people started reacting because of how that got. Yeah. But there was, like, people being poisoned. Like, it's fucking nuts. Like, Ooh. it never gets to the point where they shoot out. But no. like it's 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 crazier than Jonestown, if you ask me. Jeez. It's called Wild Wild Country. That's it, yeah, Wild Wild Country, and it, yeah, it's mental. Six episodes, and they are, uh, yeah, it's it's mind-numbingly crushing at how stupid some humans can be, and not just the people in the cult, but also the people around them, mm. because they're like. If it wasn't for the people around them fighting the people in the cult, the cult wouldn't have ended up going to the level it got to. Yeah, they like, stepped up their game. And they they would have just stayed as like a nice little commune doing their thing and probably have got involved in politics locally and tried to make a change in the world. But then because they were being treated the way they were treating, uh, mental illness in uh, one or two people took over and crazy shit happens. Um, if you're into documentaries that are a bit out there or you're into interesting documentaries about cults um it's it's worth worth six hours of your time um yeah definitely worth six hours of your time cool um i rewatched thor ragnarok as well on friday um and enjoyed it more than the first two times i watched it yeah so uh yeah amazing and i've been catching up on lots of tv shows flash shield um, um, Black Lightning on Netflix. Have you watched some more of it? Yeah, I have. Yeah, is it is it all right? Because I, I basically I watched the first episode um, and thought I won't bother with this. I dropped DC's Legends of Tomorrow because it got a bit to this is basically a shitty DC version of the Avengers, but with a character from Doctor Who, so we can do time travel Doctor Who style and ship. Who've they got from Doctor Who? Uh, Arthur, is it Arthur? The the uh, Karen Gillan's Amy Pond's partner. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he's in it as like the captain of the time traveling ship, and I kind of in the end that got so cheesy and ridiculous and uh, not very well written. I just sort of dropped that to watch Black Lightning, and I kind of think probably I'm going to drop that soon. It's it's not amazing. It's it's better than Gotham. It's better than Arrow. It's better than. DC's Legends of Tomorrow, but it's not as good as Supergirl or Flash. Flash. So I will Fair probably enough. drop it and shove a different Marvel TV show in instead when one of the new ones comes out. Yeah, well, you've only got a month and then you've yeah. got a couple to choose from. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. <coughs> that reminds me, I watched um, Altered Carbon. Yeah. Me and the missus decided we're not far off the end now, we're going to stick with it. Yeah. They've done another episode so recently on it. Um, Oh, we we watched another episode recently. It was a sort of a flashback, right? To how he got there, got to that point, and by far, it's the best episode so far yet. Right? It What's was that like episode ten or something? It's, yeah, it's something <laughs> like episode eight or nine, and it's um, so you got to watch through all the other stuff to then get to a good episode. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous, uh, and I mean, it's because uh, he's what's his what's the guy's name? I know he's good actor and everything, but he's Joel just, Kinnaman. He doesn't work in this, and the guy that plays the part do you know what I mean you know the premise of this don't yeah, you yeah he's, yeah. he's, he's previous sleeve his original sleeve he's a ninja warrior type yeah, guy and yeah it's a whole episode on him and he's, he's fantastic he's far more watchable okay. he's really good in this such a shame so we can do like we did with uh, Iron Fist can we and just do like a super cut yeah, so just I watched would. episode number one episode number eight and yeah. then the final episode done pretty much yeah cool or oh, Christ! Sorry, I forgot. I watched. Um, you know, these. Um, I have up in the background some days when I'm doing bits and bats around the house. Bits and, and it's bobs, that is. Bits and, yeah, but south, up north, south of London. Yeah, bits and what? Bats. Bats. Yeah, okay. it's a northern colloquial thing. Um, it's not. It's I digress. Because fuck. And uh, I forgot what channel it is. It's. I think it's the horror channel. Right. On um, Freeview and what have you and. They show like really bad cheap budget movies, incredibly bad. And who would be the star in role in this cheap, really bad movie? Joe Kinnaman. What's his face? Um, Iron Fist. Oh, him? Oh, really? really? He's the star in role in it. It's called Sleeping Beauty. I think it was produced recent. I think in recent years, in the last five ten years. Right. Wow. Um, and yeah, it's it's 
it's basically a rip off of it's pretty much um, Game of Thrones. Oh, really? But wow. it's called Sleeping Beauty. So, uh, uh, and this woman who's who's the black. The, the evil queen, she could bring up the dead and send the dead. It was all zombies. So it's not based all... on the, you know, the Disney. Brothers Grimm fairy tale. It, I, I is don't... it Brothers Grimm, Sleeping Beauty? Br- no, I don't no, know. I don't know. I don't think it is. But... Aesop's Fable or something. I don't know. But anyway, it's worth a watch. It's dreadful. It's really, <laughs> really bad. It, but it's I called, will probably it's, not it's put that on my watch list. It's so bad. <laughs> Sleepaway Camp, honestly. You've yeah. got, you, you really need to watch it. You will fucking love it. I keep right, going on okay. about it. Sleepaway Camp. Yeah. It's it's one of the best, worst films ever, but somehow it's so good, like, at the ending, that it makes up for all of the the badness so much that you go, this is better than most films being made now. Brilliant. Sorry, Ross. I digress. Who's okay. next? Ross, Ross did you, you say you had a second thing? Yeah, I have. Go on. Oh. It's a bit of a weird one, this, because it's not new or anything. You know when you uh, feel like you need to fill a hole in your film knowledge? Yeah. yeah. This is going to be weird, even confessing to this, because you know some films you shouldn't... But some films you, you know they're you so know some good. Films you know you are so popular, you know all about them, yeah. but you've never seen them, you don't feel you need to. And, yeah. and it's past the point where you can tell anybody you haven't seen it. Yeah. yeah. I watched Rocky for the first time ever. You're kidding! No, no, but let me t- explain to you why I watched it for the first time ever is because the first Rocky film I ever saw was Rocky 4, oh, and right. the first 10 minutes is just a recap of what happens in Rocky <laughs> 1, 2, and 3. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah? yeah fair. And there's ba- they're basically all movies about that culminate in a boxing fight that yeah. is either too close to call or the, the uh, person who's not the favourite wins. Well, they're ba- they're, they're basically they're standard sports so film tropes, aren't they? I thought it was all right. Can't believe it won Best Picture. <laughs> Honestly, I, d- I don't know what... Did it win the Oscar for Best Picture? It won Best Picture. Thing is, though, something like that, is, it's not going to stand the test of time, is it? It. And then I looked at what ban- what, what else was nominated that year. <laughs> and All the President and Men was nominated that year. Net- Network, which is pretty good. And there's one other... Oh, Taxi Driver. Network. Wow. Network should have got it. One of the finest movies ever made didn't win Best Picture that year because of Rocky. Taxi Driver or Network should have got it that year. I don't know how Rocky got it. <laughs> wow, yeah. That's surprising. Taxi Driver. Yeah. But then that's... You know, you can always, you can do an alternative Oscars of uh, films that are better than the film that won Best Picture. Mm. Yeah, true. Um, but yeah, I he's really fucking annoying, here, isn't he? Is he supposed to be slow? Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, because he's been punched in the head and had head trauma. So he's, right. Okay. He's a boxer, standard sort of stereotype of a boxer. Especially in the later films where he's retired and come back and retired and come back and Do you stuff. think it's weird that I think Rocky Four's better? No. I don't think the first one's all that. I'm gonna wa- I've downloaded them all, I'm gonna watch them all. I've seen four, Balboa and Six. Creed. No, I haven't seen Creed. That's Creed's why really I'm ramping good. up. That's why I'm Creed's watching amazing. them all because yeah, yeah. I've heard such good things about yeah. Creed. And and Creed is made by Ryan Coogler who did Black Panther. I'm going to see Black Panther on Wednesday. But that's it, yeah. So Rocky um, is another film. But the other thing that's weird is when you've seen a film 40 years after it's made that has permeated popular culture, how so much of it has been ripped off by things. Oh, yeah. Like... (laughs) um, The running up the the steps. Yeah, Yeah. the running up the steps. Adrian! And actually, he doesn't say, Adrian, I love you. She no. says it. She says I love you to him. He's just going, Adrian. I can't see. I'm blind. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, and then li- other things like the you see it in the Simpsons and comedies and stuff. The the guy who's his trainers are like ah, the, the most cool, yeah. like shriveled up, gnarled old man. He's, Yoda. Just, he's like a cliche at this point, isn't he? And other things. Well, yeah, he's he's loosely based on a couple of different trainers that real boxers have. It's like had Popeye had fought time, Yoda. So. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's what it is. Yeah. Brilliant. But yeah, I will enjoy watching the second and the third ones. I think I'm probably going to enjoy them the most. And then Which one's the one with Mr. T in? Second one. Third second one. one. No, no, it's, it's the third, third one. one. Oh, the third one. Oh, the second one. The second one's, one's just a rematch, Creed and Creed then the third yeah. one is his trainer dies. He loses his title to Mr. T. His trainer dies. Apollo Creed teaches him to fight. Then the fourth one's the Russian. Yeah. 
Dolph Lundgren, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. yeah the fifth one's his son. Bal- is it Balboa, the, the fifth one? Or? The fifth one is he retires and just trains a street fighter or something, doesn't he? I'm is it not his son? One. Is it not his son? Uh, no, all I, I know is Uncle Paulie spunks all his money, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, he's yeah he's a he's he's a reoccurring character in popular culture as well, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, morning. true. <laughs> I think yeah, I under I appreciate it. They made it on nothing, and it made a sh- it, it they made it on like two million, and it, it made two hundred and twenty five million or something. And there's, and there's some proper good and proper actual punches in the first couple and, um, as well. It's not all like faked movements as well. Like. I appreciate it. it was like a young upstarts movie as well, and but it's oh, best picture. No. Nah. No. Fair enough. What have you been watching, Chris? Me? Yeah. Well, okay. I know you guys love Robert Robert Patterson. No reaction. Okay, so <laughs> uh, there's a movie on Netflix. It's called Good Time. Right. Now, I quite like an arty, gritty kind of crime-based f- sort of thriller. Yeah. And this ticks... All the boxes. It's very, very, very good indeed. I saw it just last night. And uh, it's got Robert Patterson doing kind of a Christian Bale-esque, you will not recognise him type portrayal. Yeah. As a bloke who's got a brother who's very, very slow. And uh, he's basically convincing his, his brother to take part in bank robberies and stuff with him so that they can escape and live like away from what they suggest is an abusive grandmother. And, uh yeah. And it all unravels as you get through the movie and everything, and everything just goes to shit. And it's just, yeah, like I say, really dark, but supremely acted. Robert Pattinson is amazing. Like, what else has he been in? Oh, he's, he's Twilight the, the main vampire dude from Twilight. Oh, Shiny, of sk- sparkly skin. Oh, Christ. Yeah. I've, yeah. To well, be honest, I've tried to watch a few films that he's been in, and he's always been terrible. But if he's actually. Learned something and doing something good now. Maybe he's worth watching something like that. Well, there have been a few films. I think the one about him being a circus trainer's assistant is very good. I can't remember what it's called. It's got Naomi I've Watts in one. it. And uh, what's his name that does three languages in Inglorious Bastards? Uh, Christoph Waltz. Oh, uh, okay. That's a good movie. Not like I can remember what it's called. But yeah, he, he's shown his acting chops before. He, he's, he's yeah, I just haven't good. seen him in anything there. He's managed it. So, But this movie, I mean, he's set, he's centre stage. Like, literally, yeah. like, the focus of the film. And yeah, it's just one of these movies where you've got loads of really dark, fucked up characters surrounding him. Was this a Netflix thing? or um, I just don't know if it's it. a Netflix thing originally, but it's certainly on Netflix. It's on Netflix. It's on Netflix at the moment. Cool. I'll check that out then. Um, yeah, definitely worth a watch. And Final Space. Have you yeah. guys been watching that by any chance? I haven't. Is this the, the Futurama Maids team, but something slightly different? It's written by a guy that used to have a podcast or something, apparently, or, or a Netflix, not a Netflix, a uh, YouTube channel. And he was very successful online. And whoever is in uh, animating the show or producing the show said, right, okay, there you go. You're doing all the scripts and stuff. And uh, I've got to say, the first episode was very, very promising. And then the second episode, it fell apart really badly. Oh. And I don't know. I'm going to go back and watch some more of it tonight and see what happens. But, yeah. The, tra- the trailer put me off. Really? Yeah. I thought the trailers were quite good. Is and this the Netflix fa- as well? Uh, no. You'll have to go somewhere else for right. this. Okay, I'll have a look. I keep forgetting the bloody name of it. Every time every, we go on, yeah. like, fin- was it Final Space? space. Final, oh. space. Final yeah. Space. Yeah, the original trailer made me go, this is kind of, like, it seems a lot darker and a lot more serious than the other adult cartoons, yeah. but then it's got a really overly childlike animation style that I'm not too keen on. It's like a cross between Gravity Falls and Rick and Morty, basically. Right. But it's... Humour is, well, I don't know, it's like a, they're trying too hard, you know? It's, yeah. it's not... Maybe is, it, it, is it like a YouTube comedian? Does yeah. it seem like that? Like yeah. it's trying too hard to make everyone around you laugh? Yeah, and the the, the punchlines don't really land That's a shame. very well. So, yeah, like I say, I'm going to give it another couple of episodes ago and see what happens, but episode two was terrible. We'll right. see. Yeah, I will report back next week. Cool. That's if we don't end up mm. watching bloody Last Jedi. Actually, thinking about it, <laughs> bloody good that film. Yeah, it's nearly eight o'clock. So, have I you seen? Um, before we go, is, have you all seen uh, 
um, the disaster artist yet? No, no, not yet. Is it good? Um, should should we watch the room before? It's good if you've seen the room, right? It's probably I've seen the room, so I don't quite know how it would be if I hadn't have seen you, the I room. Think yeah, that's the, from the trailers I've seen. Yeah, I think you need I to think see the room to be. There's in enough. There's enough at the beginning, kind of explaining what the room is, that you could probably watch it and still enjoy it as a film, though you may not understand all of the bits that are meant to be funny. Mm. I think they would just come across as like, my God, this person is mental, rather than this is funny, this is like just from the film. And you'd, I, I, yeah, it's it's odd. Um, I'd say it's worth a watch if you've seen The Room. If you haven't seen The Room, you could give it a go and then maybe watch The Room afterwards or right. watch The Room before. I don't know what's the better option, but yeah, I, ha- I have watched it and I enjoyed it, but... It's it's a bit long, okay, for what it's about. That was a, wasn't it mentioned in the Oscars this year, was it? I think so. Because he's got May his new well film coming. Best hasn't screenplay. He? Mm. Yeah, he's got his new film coming. Yeah. Um. Right. Okay. Is that everything, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Right. So uh, yeah, if you guys out there want to check out anything that we do outside of the podcast. Go and have a look on our Facebook page. You'll find loads of links to our stuff there. Honorable mentions Woo. for Libsyn and Stitcher, of course. Always. They're always doing something behind the scenes. They produced the disaster, art, disaster a little bit artist recently? Maybe. 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 Uh, anything else? No. Write to <laughs> us. Give us some questions for the other the other show that we do. Yeah, true. If you want to write in, let us know. That's uh, snewwiththecrew at gmail.com or podcast at snew network. Chuck a breakthrough pool's window. Find us on Facebook. Tweet us. Chase me with a stick. Anything you want to do. Please yeah. feel free. In the meantime, have yourselves a good week and we'll catch you next time. Bye, doggy. Bye. Goodbye. Thanks so much, guys. Good night. Bye.